Your body is comprised of 30 trillion cells, and you can clump these cells together in regards to their function and they create tissues. And there's four tissue types. There's nervous tissue for communication, there's muscle tissue for movement, there's epithelial tissue that creates barriers and boundaries between structures, and finally there's connective tissue that wraps, binds and holds things together. In this video, we're going through everything you need to know about connective tissue. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at connective tissue and we're gonna have a look at the function of connective tissue, the different types, and also the cellular anatomy of connective tissue, which we call histology. But first, let's begin with the function. What does connective tissue do? So there are five functions of connective tissue that you need to know. The first of which is that it protects. Second is that it supports. It also binds. It can transport stuff. And it plays a really important role in immunity. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. I like to put protects and supports together. So connective tissue can protect and support various aspects, structures, anatomy within our body. I want you to think of the skeletal system. Your skeleton, your bones are connective tissue and you've got a skull that protects your brain and you've got the rib cage which protects your heart and your lungs. But it also supports as well. So your bony skeleton supports the weight of your body. Think about the fibrous pericardium that surrounds the heart. It both protects and supports the heart as well. And there's many different organs and structures that will have various capsules or structures around them that play both a role in protection and support. When we take a look at binding, it actually binds and holds things and anchors structures within the body. I like to think about the connective tissue within the gastrointestinal tract. So think of our small and large intestines. The thing that stops them from being these sausages that don't wrap and bind and hold these things and sort of creates these knots is because of the connective tissue, the mesentery structures that sort of hold it together. But also, when it comes to binding, I want you to think of the kidneys. So your kidneys, which are sitting relatively high up in the posterior aspect of your abdomen, so what we call retroperitoneal, they're actually anchored there by connective tissue. And without this connective tissue, your kidneys would be free floating. So it plays an important role in binding and anchoring structures. Transport. So, connective tissue includes blood. So blood, being a liquid, is going to be transporting things throughout your body. It's transporting red blood cells that contain oxygen uh, and carbon dioxide as well, but it's also transporting things that are dissolved in your blood plasma as well. So this includes things like ions, so electrolytes, nutrients and waste as well, as well as other various gases that might be dissolved in that plasma. So transport. And then finally, immunity. So think about our lymphatic fluids. Think about our white blood cells. Our white blood cells are going to be floating through our bloodstream, which is part of the connective tissue, and it provides immune support. So remember, never let monkeys eat bananas, neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils. They're all cells of connective tissue. They're cells that are floating through our bloodstream, providing us immunity. So these are the five functions of connective tissue that you must remember. Now some connective tissue can be hard and dense, like bone, for example. Some can be semi-solid, like cartilage and uh, adipose tissue, so fatty tissue. And some can be liquid, like blood. So then the question that you must ask yourself is what makes a connective tissue a connective tissue? If they're all so very different in regards to the way that they look, what are the underlying features that hold them all together, so to speak? Well, there's three different things structurally you need to understand that makes a connective tissue a connective tissue. These are the fact that they're all made up of cells, gels, and fibers. Let's take a look. First is, let's take a look at cells. What are the different cell types of connective tissue? So we can basically break these up into the blasts and the sites. 
So any word that ends, so has the suffix blast, is gonna tell you it's an immature cell. It's there to help build that tissue. So some examples of blasts for connective tissue include fibroblasts, osteoblasts, chondroblasts, and what we call hemocytoblasts. So these are the immature cells of connective tissue. Fibroblasts will tend to create most of the connective tissue proper. We'll talk about what that means in a second. Osteoblasts, bone producing cells. Chondroblasts, cartilage producing cells. And hemocytoblasts are blood producing cells, both red blood cells and white blood cells. This isn't an exhaustive list of the blasts, but these are some of the most important and most common. The second type of cell you need to know are the sites. These are the mature cells, the ones that when you look at the tissue down the microscope, these are the cells that you are seeing. So these include cells like adipocytes, osteocytes, chondrocytes, erythrocytes, and finally, leukocytes. So what we have here are fat cells, bone cells, cartilage cells, red blood cells, white blood cells. Now, again, it's not an exhaustive list of the cell types, but these are the most common and most important. So remember, these are the cells associated with connective tissue. What they do is they produce the next two components that we spoke about. They release them to create the very specific connective tissue type. So I said the three things you need to remember are cells. The second is gels. Now in actual fact, the gels have a specific name called ground substance. So what does ground substance do? Ground substance is the fluid rich environment that connective tissue components are embedded within. It creates the bulk of connective tissue. And the gels or the ground substance is sort of like jelly. You go to create jelly, uh, it's going to have this wobbly base to it, but you can put things in it. You could put marshmallows in it, you could put a whole bunch of stuff in it, but the actual environment that all those things are embedded in, that's the gel, that's the ground substance. And it's made up of three things that you should remember. These three things include glycosaminoglycans, also referred to as GAGs. That's a horrible acronym, but it is GAGs. The second is proteoglycans. And the third is glycoproteins. Now this is where students freak out and understandably have a look. Proteoglycans, protein sugar. Glycoproteins, sugar protein. What's the difference? It's the same thing, it's just flipped the other way around. Well, one's gonna have more proteins than sugars, one's gonna have more sugars than proteins, but at the end of the day, all you really need to know is that both of these are protein, sugar, conjugates. And importantly, what you'll find is that the proteoglycans are going to be bound to glycosaminoglycans. Together, they end up becoming very, very hydrophilic. They love water. And this is the final component of the gels, is water is involved here. So water loves binding to these two again, creating the bulk of that connective tissue environment. Now there's other examples of glycosaminoglycans. That's not one thing, it's actually an umbrella term for a range of things. They're just polysaccharides. They're big, long sugar molecules. So what are some examples? Well, one of which is hyaluronic acid. Another is chondroitin sulfate. Or even heparin sulfate. But there's many types, including keratin sulfate and many others. But at the end of the day, what you need to know is that they bind to these proteoglycans and then they hold on to the water. The question you might have is, what about the glycoproteins? What do they do? They're really important as signaling molecules. Surface signaling molecules, cell signaling molecules. They play a role in enzymatic reactions and so forth. So these are the gels that's part of connective tissue. Finally, the third thing you need to know about connective tissue is they're made up of fibers. So there's three fiber types that you must know. These fibers include collagen fibers, elastic fibers, and reticular fibers. 
So what are these fibers? So these fibers will provide some of the important structural characteristics of the connective tissue. So the way I like to think about it is collagen fibers are like metal bars. They're very, very strong. So they create rigidity. They make it a strong, tough tissue. Elastic fibers are real stretchy. They give the connective tissue the property that you can stretch it, and then when you let go, it snaps back to its normal position. So it provides elasticity to a structure. And then finally, reticular fibers, they're feather-like looking structures, like network structures. They form what looks like could be a filtration process. So if you have a look, the reticular fibers, they look more like that. So they provide a network within the connective tissue. So what's some examples? All right, so really tough types of connective tissue. Think about when you eat a steak, right? And you end up getting that tenderness, sort of collagenous white tissue that you chew on and you just chew, 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 and you can't break it down. You can't break it down because it's filled with collagen, right? And this is tenderness structures. These are fibrous structures holding the muscle tissue together, but it's connective tissue. So if it contains collagen, it's really tough. If it contains elastic tissue, well, it's gonna be really stretchy. And there's a multitude of different types of tissues that you can stretch within the body that can then snap back. And then finally, reticular. So it forms this network-like structure, and what you'll find, it's often in lymphatic tissue. And we know that lymphatic tissue is very important for filtration and playing a role in the filtration process. So often you'll find reticular connective tissues in lymphatic tissues and other like the spleen, for example. So at the end of the day, every single connective tissue contains cells, gels, and fibers. The thing that makes one a solid compared to a semi-solid compared to a liquid depends on the cell, depends on the gels, and depends on the fiber types. So finally, what I want to look at is the classification, the characterization process of all the different connective tissue types. So when you open up your textbook and have a look at the classification processes that we use for connective tissue, it looks complex, and it is but I'm gonna make it simple for you. We're gonna have a look at the different ways that we can classify all the different connected tissue types. So firstly, there's three major headings you need to understand for connective tissue. First of which is what we call connective tissue proper. The second category is supporting connective tissue. And then finally, you have fluid connective tissue. So these are the first three big headings you need to understand. So connective tissue proper, proper. Well, the way I like to think about this is this is the proper connective tissue. This is the stuff that when you think of connective tissue is connective tissue, like the stuff that anchors and holds and binds all the organs of your body, that type of connective tissue. So it binds, it holds, it supports and so forth. That's connective tissue proper. Supporting connective tissue supports the structures of your body. So think about things like bone and cartilage. That's supporting connective tissue. And then finally, this is an easy one, fluid connective tissue, that's your blood. So there's gonna be subcategories within each that we do need to understand. First of which is under connective tissue proper, you can have two subcategories called dense and loose. What's the difference? Dense simply means that the cells, the gels and fibers that make up these connective tissues are densely packed together. There's heaps of them and they're really densely packed. The loose simply means that they're loosely arranged within that connective tissue. Now when we look at dense, you can have what we call dense regular. You can have dense irregular. And you can have elastic. So let's take a look at these. I already told you that the dense means that they're densely packed, cells, gels, and fibers densely packed. But what does the regular irregular mean? Well, this is easy. It's talking about the fibers, the collagen, the elastic, the reticular. Regular means they're placed in an irregular pattern. They're placed in a regular pattern. So they're all facing the same direction, for example. So they might have their collagen fibers all facing in the one direction. Why would you need a connective tissue where all the fibers are in one direction? 
Well, it means they need to resist some form of stretch or pulling or tearing force in one direction. So what type of structures might be dense regular? Well, think tendons and ligaments. These are the structures that hold bone to bone and muscle to bone, for example, and they resist stretching and tearing forces in single planes. Super important. What about dense irregular? Well, probably makes sense now that I explain that. It means that the fibers, the collagen, elastic reticular, they're arranged irregularly at what almost seems to be at random. Now, why would you want these fibers arranged in an irregular pattern? Well, because they need to resist pulling, stretching, and all these tensile forces in multiple directions. Think about your skin. Think about the layer underneath your skin, because your skin's the epidermis. That's its own tissue type. It's not connective. Underneath that is the dermis, and that's connective tissue. So that needs to resist stretching, pulling, and tearing forces from multiple directions. So think your dermis. And then finally, you have elastic. This is telling you that you have densely packed fibers of elastic tissue. So this needs to be a connective tissue that must be able to stretch and then recoil and snap back to its normal anatomical position. What needs to do that? Think about the heart. The left hand side of the heart, it contracts really hard, 120 millimeters of mercury worth of pressure, pumping blood out into the arteries and those arteries stretch and then they snap back and recall to continually propagate that blood. So that means arteries. So that's our connective tissue proper dense. Now connective tissue proper loose. I said loosely arranged. What examples are loose? Well, we've got what's called areola, reticular, and adipose. So, Areola connective tissue. It's a loose connective tissue. It's loosely arranged, but it's really important. This is the type of connective tissue that anchors and binds the deep organs of your body. So think about your gastrointestinal tract, all those structures, how it's being held together in your abdomen. That's areola connective tissue. So this is connective tissue that binds and anchors. What about reticular? I told you that reticular fibers form these networks for filtration, and I said they're really important in lymphatic tissue like the spleen. So you find this reticular connective tissue in lymphatic organs. And then finally, adipose. This is easy. Adipose means fat. This is the fat tissue of our body. So now what we've done is connective tissue proper, both dense and loose. Easy, right? Now let's look at the supporting connective tissue. So we've done connective tissue proper. Let's look at supportive connective tissue. This is the connective tissue that supports our body, supports the weight of our body, for example, like our skeleton and our cartilage. So let's have a look. We'll first just write bone. That's the first type. And luckily for us, there's no subcategories here. So just bone. That's all you need to remember. And cartilage but there's three subcategories of cartilage that you must know. These include hyaline, what else? Elastic and fibrocartilage. So I want you to think about this. You might go, wait, there's elastic there, there's elastic there. Okay, this is elastic, dense connective tissue from connective tissue proper. The cell types here are mainly fibroblast-based cells. Here, the, this is gonna be chondrocyte or chondroblast based cells, but both contain high densities of elastic tissue, right? So while the elastic, uh, elastic fibers, so while the elastic fibers are common here, the cell type is different, hence it's a different type of connective tissue. So this is how we arrange it differently. Anyway, let's have a look. For the cartilage based, what's the difference between hyaline, elastic and fibro cartilage? So hyaline and cartilage is very glassy and it lines the ends of bones that articulate. It, it's what we call lining articulating surfaces. So think about joints, shoulder joint, elbow joint, knee joint, hip joint, they all contain hyaline cartilage. So think about articulating joints. Elastic cartilage, well, this is going to be like the ear, for example, and the epiglottis. This is cartilage that can be moved and 
distorted and bent and pulled and it snaps back to its normal area. So the ear and epiglottis. And then fibrocartilage. This resists compressive forces. So think the vertebrae of your spine and also the meniscus of like your knee, for example. Resists compressive forces. All right, that is our supporting connective tissue. Now finally we can look at the fluid connective tissue. This is easy, this is blood. And there we go. What we've now gone through is everything you need to know about connective tissue. If you like this, please hit like, leave a positive comment for me and subscribe. Tell your friends. I'm Dr. Mike. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.